Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Killer Creation. In this series, I create a killer and a survivor for the asymmetrical horror survival game, Dead by Daylight. I'd like to thank you all for your support, your feedback on the Dead by Daylight and Furry Aminos, as well as the Dead by Daylight official forums and Twitter has been a huge help with making everything fun and balanced. I'd like to thank all my new subscribers and for all the comments you guys give in the videos. I hope you all enjoyed this video enough to consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell to be among the first to see the newest content. With all that out of the way, let's hop right into this week's killer creation and take a look at our newest killer, the Pharaoh. Pharaoh Thesh was a powerful and ambitious pharaoh of the Second Dynasty. His desire for immortality was legendary, and it was well known that he would go to any lengths to achieve this goal. His court held more than its fair share of priests, scholars, and alchemists whose sole purpose was to find a way to keep their king alive throughout the millennia. Among these individuals was a group of five who were willing to delve into darker mysteries and forbidden knowledge. They approached the pharaoh and presented him with a way to obtain eternal life. They would sacrifice some of his subjects and channel their life essence into the pharaoh. After the first round of sacrifices, the group insisted that the pharaoh looked younger and more vigorous than ever. More sacrifices were made as the pharaoh continued to age over the years, and each time the group worked harder and harder to convince the pharaoh that the process was working. As the pharaoh aged, his citizens grew to fear him and his desire for immortality, and that they may be next among those sacrificed for his goals. But as his skin wrinkled and sagged and his bones ached with age, he grew angry that his favored court members were lying to him for decades. His fury grew so much that he cried out to the gods for vengeance. One god answered, Anubis. Anubis kept to the shadows but promised Thesh that if he wanted to be free of his touch, he would have to personally sacrifice souls to him whenever Anubis desired. Thesh agreed and knew precisely who he would sacrifice first. He called his group of advisors together and in a flurry of anger and desperation, slaughtered them all in the name of Anubis. After the deed was done, Anubis appeared and revealed himself but it was not Anubis. Spider-like spines erupted from the being, and it tore open a portal to a dark realm. Thesh tried to protest, but he had already sealed his bargain with the Entity in blood, and he was pulled into the Entity's realm to kill and provide entertainment for the Entity for all eternity. Now that we know how the Pharaoh came to serve the Entity, let's take a look at his stats, then jump into his powers and perks. The Pharaoh moves at an average 4.4 meters per second, has a 24 meter terror radius, and is of average height for a killer. His decent speed and smaller terror radius help him to find and close in on survivors while giving very little warning. This will combo very well with his power, Curse of the Pharaoh. Generators on the map are cursed with a status effect. Survivors who work on a generator suffer from that status effect while working on that generator and for 15 seconds after they stop working on the generator. Whenever a generator is completed, survivors suffer from that generator's status effect for the rest of the game. Generators will be cursed with one of the following status effects. Blindness, cursed, exhaustion, hemorrhage, hindered, mangled, or oblivious. If a cursed generator is completed while a hex totem is active, that totem can no longer be cleansed. If there are more than one hex totems in play when a cursed generator is completed, one of the totems will be chosen at random to be uncleansable. The pharaoh's second power is called Scarab Nest. The pharaoh can channel this ability to place a scarab nest on the ground. Scarab nests are 5 meters in diameter. Whenever a survivor steps over the nest, they scream and scarabs begin to climb over them. Survivors continue to cry out in pain while scarabs are still on them. Survivors with scarabs on them are slowed by 10%. For every 10 seconds, the scarabs remain on the survivor, their speed is slowed by an additional 5%. If a survivor with scarabs on them interacts with another survivor, or performs a cooperative action with another survivor, scarabs also climb onto that survivor. Survivors can remove the scarabs by standing still and channeling the activate ability button for 3 seconds. The pharaoh can place a total of 5 scarab nests around the map. Scarab nests cannot be cleansed. And that'll do it for the Pharaoh's powers. No doubt you'll notice that the Pharaoh isn't exactly the most mobile killer and has very little he can do to actively affect a chase. What he does is excel at debuffing survivors passively as they complete generators, and by strategically placing scarab nests around the map so that survivors are forced to avoid high traffic or tactically advantageous areas. The true challenge for the survivors will be all of these status effects that will slowly build up as they complete generators. They also have to choose which generators to do tactically by choosing which status effect they can deal with versus which generators are better to complete according to their location. Scarab nests are limited, but large enough to make the middle of jungle gyms no-go zones. Placing them carefully can not only make some generators difficult to complete, but also make places on the map places to avoid during chases. Now that we've covered the pharaoh's powers, let's check out his perks and see what he brings to help alter up the killer's game. The pharaoh's first perk is called Hex Trap Tomb. Places people thought would be safe are never what they seem when they are under your wicked influence. For every generator completed, 
Exit gates take an additional 2 seconds to open, and the hatch does not appear for an additional 5 seconds. Any time accumulated with this hex before it is cleansed is still applied. The Pharaoh's second perk is called Encroaching Death. Your presence instills such fear in those around you that their knees begin to buckle and their body almost refuses to move. Whenever survivor is unhooked within 20, 30, or 40 meters of the killer, their speed is reduced by 3, 5, or 10 percent, and they cannot perform quick vaulting actions for 5, 10, or 15 seconds. The Pharaoh's third perk is called Cursed Presence. So cursed and powerful is your presence that it prevents any form of luck or exceptional skill to be had by your enemies. Whenever survivors within your terror radius, they do not gain great skill check zones on any skill check. And that does it for the Pharaoh's perks. Hex Trap Tomb is an in-game focus hex. While its most potent effects aren't as powerful as some other perks that affect exit gates, it does have the bonus of keeping the effects it's built up before it was cleansed. It will make for an excellent combo with things like Blood Warden. Encroaching Death is a pretty punishing perk that allows you to catch up to survivors who unhook others and stops them from being able to escape by vaulting reliably. It would make for an excellent combination with Make Your Choice. Cursed Presence is a way to stop survivors from hitting great skill checks, but with the limiter that they must be within your terror radius. Since this isn't exactly optimal, it likely won't see much play except in very focused builds with things like Unnerving Presence. With the Pharaoh's perks out of the way, let's take a look at this week's survivor, James Litz. James was an archaeologist who enjoyed looking into rumors, myth, and legends. His expertise fell into Egyptology, but he would go anywhere to explore and discover something new. The extreme research projects he took on garnered a great deal of skepticism, however, and funding was always tight. Because of this, he had to keep his crews small, which was fine by him since he didn't like to be around a lot of people, preferring to keep to his books and research than interact with people. It was his reputation for researching the written-off legends of the past that got the attention of a wealthy benefactor who asked for him to find the tomb of an ancient pharaoh who was said to have killed thousands in his attempts to escape death. James took the job on with gusto and poured his time into researching the pharaoh's history. What he discovered sent fearful and exciting chills down his spine. This pharaoh had actually existed, and the location of his tomb was able to be found. James took his team and found the location of the tomb. It took several weeks of careful digging before they unearthed the entrance. Being the responsible team leader he was, James insisted on entering first and setting up the lights so that everyone else would have a safer time of entering. Once he crossed the threshold, however, the stone slab slammed shut once again, and James was left in the black void, with the curious sight of a firelight luring him further into the darkness. And now we know how James came to the Entity's realm. Let's look at his perks and see what new tricks he's able to teach the other survivors. James's first perk is called Desperate Escape. You had some pretty close calls in life, and they have taught you to take any opportunity that presents itself in any way you can. Every 45, 30, or 15 seconds you earn a chase, you earn a token. You can perform a quick vaulting action from any angle so long as you have a token. Whenever you perform a quick vaulting action, you lose a token. James's second perk is called Archaic Research. Your ability to scan for clues allows you to put together information you will need for later. For every 40, 30, or 20 seconds you can see the killer while not in their terror radius, you can channel the Activate Ability button to see the killer's aura and the aura of any items belonging to the killer for a total of 10 seconds. James' third perk is called Tomb Mapping. Going into an unexplored territory is dangerous. You're used to being the first one in and leaving markers to light the way for those who follow you. Whenever you pass through the entrance to a path that leads to a different level, you may use the secondary action button while sprinting to mark the path for other survivors to see. Survivors can see the aura of this path when they come within 10, 20, or 30 meters of it. And that does it for James's perks. Desperate Escape allows you to build up the ability to quick vault from angles the killer won't expect you to be able to. Though I should point out that you cannot vault backwards with this perk. You do still have to be able to see the vault as you take it. Archaic Research isn't the strongest perk, and its requirements can be tricky to pull off. But the information you get in exchange for watching the killer can be invaluable, especially with a Survive with Friends group. Tomb Mapping is another perk that isn't exactly strong, but it can be useful, especially on maps like The Game or Hawkins National Laboratory, which survivors will sometimes struggle to find stairs and ramps. But that'll do it for today's killer creation video. I hope you all like the Pharaoh and James. I think they both bring some fun alterations to the game that will change up the way players approach a trial. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. If you didn't, please give it a dislike and let me know why in the comments. I hope you all have a great day, and as always, stay positive.